Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're going to be doing my June TBR, and I did pretty good last month, sort of, I guess, following what I uh, said in that TBR, but this month upcoming, I'm going to be doing a lot of research on the Hittite so I can write some history articles for uh, my Facebook page um, and my website, as well as a, another um, Facebook page that uh, deals a lot with history. Um, I'll put his link down below too as well. But yeah, let's just get started. I'm going to read quite a few nonfiction books on the Hittites up front, but also we'll try and get some uh, fantasy in there as well, as I've been asked to review a couple books. So let's get right to it. All right, this month I picked up a ton of books on the Hittites, and I've already read one book on the Hittites by Oliver Gurney. But let's get started with the books I picked up to do some research. All right, first up, I'm going to go with one of the Osprey publishing books that I enjoy so much, and they happen to have a title called Hittite Fortifications, 1650 to 700 BC by Konstantin Nosov, and illustrated by Brian Delf. Looks really cool, and all these Osprey publishing books have really good um, photographs and illustrations. As you can see, just really superb. Also, high quality. So, there's that one. That hopefully will be a quick read. Get that one out of the way pretty quick. Obviously, just a quick twice, but whatever. Um, the main standard work is the Kingdom of the Hittites by Trevor Bryce, and I might actually, when I'm reading this, request from the library the second edition of this book, because after doing a little bit of research, it does seem like there was um, a lot more updates, a lot more new material in the second edition, but it's like 50 or 60 bucks, and I wasn't going to pay that much just for a, uh, a book on the Hittites, but anyways, I picked this one up, and this is supposed to be like the standard work on the Hittites for like colleges and stuff, if they offer a course on the Hittites, which... Probably isn't like that many, but anyways, like I said, probably the standard work, but I believe it only deals with like the political uh, and narrative history, which is also why I'm going to pick up Trevor Bryce's work, um, Hittite Society and Culture, or Life in Hittite Society, or something like that. Put it up right there, and this one obviously deals with all the pretty much other aspects of Hittite life. I'm going to be trying to get this one through interlibrary loan um, through my local library. Next up, we have Hattusha, capital of the Hittites, and this is just an academic work dealing with, um, obviously, Hattusha, which is basically just the Hittite capital during the Hittite Empire. Hopefully, I'm going to learn a lot. Um, there's been a lot of archaeological excavation at this site, so I'm hoping there's a lot of uh, material uh, of that sort of nature in this book. The next book up is The Hittites by G.J. McQueen, and the subtitle is The Hittites and Their Contemporaries in Asia Minor. And I've started this work. I don't know if I'll finish it in May. Probably not. But um, this one is interesting because it's got about, I think its selling point is it's got about 150 illustrations and figures throughout the book. As you can see, there's just tons of them. And it deals... Uh, as the subtitle states, a lot of just everything in basically Asia Minor and ancient Anatolia, such as um, the state of Arizawa and maybe like Troy, stuff like that. Uh, probably if it covers the Neo-Hittite too as well, probably like the Lydians and Cilicians and stuff like that. So yeah, this one has like a different little spin on it and just uh, excited to get reading this one because of all the um, figures and illustrations to help you just understand their you know art and architecture just different facets of their life a lot better when there's um obviously like images that you can see um if i'm doing really good with reading i'll also read uh c w serum's the uh, secret of the hittites i think this one's a little dated though so i'm probably gonna leave this one for last um i've heard it's pretty dry which um if i've already read three or four other books on the hittites i'll probably just Maybe you reference, like, look up a couple different things to see if there's any different viewpoints on very specific things. But I might not read it. But if I'm, if I get a good rhythm going and I um, push through the first ones pretty quickly, I might as well just uh, obviously push through this one as well. And if I get through and all those two, I'm gonna read um, Ionia in the East by Hogarth. Uh, I don't know what the first name of Hogarth is, but well, might as well just look look it up. It's kind of silly. All right, I own in the East by David Hogarth. Um, this I think probably deals more with the Neo Hittites, uh, which came after the Bronze Age, which um, 
obviously the Ionians are the like southern Greeks living in Turkey, such as at like Miletus and Halicarnassus and um, things of that nature that the Persians like later conquered. Um, but anyways, I'm hoping this just gives me a new perspective on things and how maybe those Ionian Greeks were influenced uh, maybe from their proximity to the Hittite Empire and see if the Hittites um, basically, like I said, had any impact on um, Ionian Greek society and culture. The next book that I'm going to be reading, so if I can finish Dark Matter and the Dinosaurs before the month is out, um, the month of May right now, I will p start reading The Ancient Near East, a very short introduction by Amanda Podany. And I really enjoy these Oxford very short introductions, and this is like the closest thing that um, I have on the, or that uh, Oxford very short introductions have on the Hittites. Um, I'm sure they have like a chapter or two in here. But yeah, I'm definitely going to be picking this one up. I might start it before the end of the month uh, based on how fast I read the book I'm currently reading right now. All right, so there's plenty of nonfiction right there. Um, I might not read every single book on the Hittites that I just stated right there, but these are going to be the uh, works I'm going to be trying researching and um, referencing to in my work. So definitely going to try and get through as much as possible of those. However, I'd also like to read some fantasy, obviously, uh, as that's like my secondary genre. I'll probably have to forego World War One and the life sciences this month just so I can read enough on the Hittites. But here's some fantasy. With the fantasy books, I definitely want at least one that I know I'm really going to love. So I'm going to read my autographed edition of uh, Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan. This is the first book in the Powder Mage trilogy. But I'm really enjoying Flintlock Fantasy. And I've already read Sins of Empire, which is the first book in the second trilogy that takes place in the Powder Mage universe. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm pretty sure I'm just going to really like Promise of Blood as well. So that's going to be uh, one I'm definitely going to read uh, in June. I also have some pretty exciting news, or at least I think so, being a booktuber, is I've been requested to um, receive a couple of books for free and give um, reviews on them. And I know I just think that's like super cool and exciting. Even though they're not exactly books, I think that um, I read all, like those genres all the time. I was definitely excited to pick up some for free and just see uh, what other people have written. So let's get to the first one, and it is Dawn and Damnation by Clark Casey. And this is the first book uh, in a series of paranormal western books. Um, I don't know if weird westerns and paranormal westerns are the same thing, but they probably sound pretty similar, so I'm definitely going to give this one a shot since I read a weird western for the one readathon to rule them all, and it was definitely entertaining, so I'm definitely excited uh, to read this one. And I'm also receiving the second book in the series, which is entitled Dead Indian Wars, and it's just the second book in the Damnation series, and I'm definitely excited to read both of these uh, and see what they're all about. And for the third book, which to be honest, um, after looking at the cover, I didn't think um, I would actually want to read it at all because it looks like a um, like a young uh, YA book. However, after um, conversing with the author a little bit, who was uh, really nice and polite, he did explain that a lot of the themes in the book are really mature and uh, maybe a little bit darker than normal. So I decided to, you know, why not give uh, YA something of a shot? And the book is Clara Mandrake's Monster. And like I said, the author is um, Ibrahim Amin. And as he stated, there are some uh, d like uh, mature elements to the story. So I'm definitely willing to uh, give the book a read, even though it doesn't look like something I would normally read. So yeah, I'm excited to get out of my comfort zone a little bit, uh, read some books um, that I normally wouldn't read, and see what they're all about. Um, if I finish all of those, which I doubt, I might read one more fantasy book, and who knows what that'll be. But I think definitely all those books on the Hittites are um, going to give me plenty of reading material to try and get through. But hopefully I'm going to be able to use them well and be able to write some uh, good articles on those. But whatever you're reading next month, um, I hope you do well with it. And always remember, read victoriously.